We love horror movies and we're also fantastically fascinated by the arcane mysteries of the occult and the mystical magical professions that surround its dark arts. You could say that historically the very DNA of horror cinema was founded within the motif of the occult. Since 1922's Nosferatu to the works of the legendary Kenneth Anger and later Stanley Kubrick, it's safe to say that horror cinema has been fascinated by the origin of the occult. So what better way than to combine these two bizarre passions into a neat hand Andy, little list. Hello horror fans and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube top 5 scary videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 scary occult horror movies. Roll the clip. How dare you? Thou shalt not bow down before any graven image. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 1992's Hellraiser 3 Hell on Earth, which eh, is kind of trashy, but that's besides the point. Pinhead in a church. Yeah, of course we're going to use that to set the scene for this particular video list. Like I said previously, it's all about framing. Kicking off at number five, The Devil's Candy 2017. And if you're in the mood for a tongue in cheek subversion of modern horror concepts, while also delivering consistently nerve wracking cinematic set pieces, then The Devil's Candy is for you. The fact that this film doesn't really take itself that seriously also adds to the slow, creeping horror that the film's opening third deliberately sets up. It's like no one's ever in control of anything, even the level of humour delivered, and that's a pretty uneasy feeling. Written and directed by Sean Byrne, the Australian director responsible for the fantastic 2009 film The Love Ones, which if you haven't seen it, please do. It's it's brilliant. His sophomore film The Devil's Candy tells the tale of an unwitting family and their brush with the devil, all beneath a heavy metal homage. It's got all the hallmarks of a classic haunted house horror, detailing the plight of the struggling Hellman family who just kind of want to get on with their lives but obviously find themselves at the beck and call of the devil himself and his loyal servants. Also as seems to be standard with Burns filmmaking, this film is just beautiful to watch, juxtaposed by some pretty vividly violent imagery. You want to dip your toe into some occult horror? The Devil's Candy is for you. Next up at number four, Rosemary's Baby, 1968. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? He has his father's eyes. While it may not be apparent to some and while this film is also ridden with controversy from its filmmaker to the pitfalls and tragedies following its release, Rosemary's Baby has proven to be, time and time again, the benchmark for occult horror cinema. Adapted from Ira Levin's horror best selling novel of the same name, Rosemary's Baby was Roman Polanski's first American feature film which paved the way for some of horror cinema's most iconic films following its 1968 release. The thing is, what Rosemary's Baby proved is that horror can be delivered without the trappings and overstarred monsters of nightmarish creation. This film is terrifying because of its humanity and of course a perverse upper class cult that wants to usher in the antichrist. This film is a long sprawling display of psychological horror tinted with the supernatural delivered in its entirety by some of the most incredibly vivid performances in horror cinema. Mia Farrow as the titular Rosemary Woodhouse is so damn good that it's criminal she doesn't get more recognition for her harrowing on screen depiction. Combine that with the late great Ruth Gordon Jones as the terrifying mini castaway and what we have is some of the most nerve wracking disturbing emotional trauma ever captured on screen. It would also later inspire one of my favourite films of all time, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, so two for one guys, value. Swinging in at number three, The Witch 2015. <laughs> Boo! If you're at all familiar with this channel, you'll understand the adoration that I have for this film, which is quickly becoming an unhealthy adoration because I'm pretty sure there are only a certain number of times that you can watch 2015's The Witch before succumbing to madness. Also, shameless name drop, but I had the pleasure of having a beer with the voice of Black Phillip and he was awesome. So. There you go. Written and directed by the unstoppably original Robert Eggers, who is swiftly cementing himself as one of my favourite horror directors after just one film, may I add, and I'm incredibly excited for his new release, The Lighthouse, and you should be too. 
The witch tells the story of a separatist family during the mid 1630s in New England who are cast out by the Puritan Plymouth colony and set out to build their new life in the deep woods of a bleak New England. This film is a demonstration of isolation and achieves that aim to literal perfection. The amount of times I've watched this film and realised that in all honesty it could be set anywhere, during any time and any place and it would still have the same impact. But thankfully for us it's not and this films lifeblood is dripping in religious undertones, the arcane and the mysteries of the human and spirit and none of it is a commentary which more often than not filmmakers find themselves doing all of it is completely personal this film soars because of its characters and i love it it's great coming in at number 2 a dark song 2016 Some people may disagree with this film's placement on this list, but I'll tell you why 2016's A Dark Song makes it to my number two. Because in fact it is perhaps one of the most truest and personal depictions of the occult in the whole of cinema. It is incredibly difficult to argue against that fact when 98% of this film is about two people in an isolated abandoned house in the Welsh countryside trying to perform an occult ritual. But also it is just an incredibly awesome display of Irish and British horror and we know how much I like to advocate that fact, so go me. It also co stars one of the United Kingdom's most criminally underrated actors of all time, Steve Oram. And if you haven't seen 2012 Sightseers, please do. Trust me. It's great. Written and directed by the fledgling indie director Liam Gavin, this film also happens to be his directorial debut, and that fact definitely makes him want to watch. A Dark Song tells the story of Sophia, a grieving mother whose seven year old son had been murdered and kidnapped, and Joseph Solomon, an occultist who promises to perform a gruelling ritual that will lead to her ultimate salvation. No spoilers, because if you haven't seen this film, then you'll definitely want to go in blind, because what plays out is a visual onslaught grounded in an unnerving reality that confronts some incredible incredibly tough questions. Great film, great premise, great execution. And finally coming in at our number one spot, The Wicker Man, 1973. A little old beetle goes round and round, always the same way you see, until it ends up right up tight to the nail. Poor old thing. <laughs> ah, yes, of course, because we cannot talk about occult horror without addressing its pièce de résistance, 1973's The Wicker Man. Not only is The Wicker Man the best occult horror movie ever made, it's also the best British horror movie ever made, and Double also stands tall amongst the halls of horror legend. Loosely based on the 1976 David Pinner novel, Ritual, Anthony Schaefer's adapted screenplay for The Wicker Man is still heralded as one of the most perfectly complete screenplays in horror history. What it also achieved though was to prove to the genre that not everything needed a complete and happy ending, a hallmark often attributed to modern British cinema. If you haven't seen 1973's The Wicker Man directed by Robin Hardy and starring the colossal Christopher Lee alongside Edward Woodward, then please stop what you're doing right now and watch it. Also please don't accidentally watch the painstaking 2006 remake unless you're in the mood for watching a comedy because it's so bad that it's hilarious. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Oh, no, my eyes! Ah! Throughout the events of the film, Woodward plays police sergeant Neil Howie, who journeys to the remote Hebridean island of Summer Isle to investigate the disappearance of a young girl. And that's all I'm going to tell you, because what plays out is perhaps one of the most completely chilling demonstrations of the occult in horror cinema ever. And it is terrifying. Whew. Well there we have it folks, that's my list, how about yours? Why don't you let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Before we depart though, let's read out some of your most interesting comments from over the past few days. First up, Mr F, mysterious, says, Jack, what's your favourite donut? P.S. Love the channel. Cheers Mr F, glad to have you on board. As for the donut, to be honest, I'd rather pick a cream cheese bagel or something like that. But that isn't pertinent to your question, so I'd have to choose a Krispy Kreme Reese's Pieces peanut butter donut. Damn straight. Donuts in an occult video. That's a crossover I didn't expect. Well on that note, horror fans, just sticking around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.